Hey guys, how you doing? This is Fee, I'm in the rough and um, hopefully you've uh, got plenty of crafts to do. Um, <laughs> I never did have a big stash but I think I'll still be able to make it. <laughs> so I thought I'd just have a chat. Um, I have you know, time to step up and do, do my bit for the YouTube community uh, and I didn't know what to talk about because let's face it what's going on in the world at the moment everybody is dealing with and having to live through and the media are fairly going off about it um, yes we need to be updated yes all of that but some of it just causes a bit more panic um, i.e. <laughs> the toilet tissue issue <laughs> and that's what I'm calling it um, you know, can understand hand sanitizers, gloves, and all of that going into shortage. But the jokes I've seen around that one is, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's a case of well, you know, because it's a cough, a cold, a flu-like symptoms, and all that, um, we're going to have clean bums at the end of it. But then, what's going to happen <laughs> if you actually get the other and get hit with gastro? What are you going to go out and buy then? <laughs> uh, cute, yeah. Um, yes, there's some funny little memes going around and all of that stuff. But for me, I thought I'd just talk about my situation. Um, so in WA, we've now, so in Australia, borders were closed off basically. Um, in WA, um, entering into WA from the other states, uh, i.e., you enter into Australia, into WA via Northern Territory or South Australia. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's big stoppages there. Um, people are having to self quarantine uh, when they come through, um, but people don't seem to understand the whoops, meaning of self quarantine which is the hardest thing to see. Um, I had uh, one, of the one of the chicks I work with, chick, ladies, female, um, friend, <laughs> definitely call her a friend. She was over in Singapore when the news came out about um, Australians need to come, when they come back to the country to self-isolate. Um, we, you know, we, we, they need to self-isolate for two weeks. So she came back from holidays and all. I was um, chatting with her, um, I think I was just messaging, yeah it was just on messenger, just seeing how she's going and I was saying that I was able to get spaghetti and pasta sauce and that and she's like going well you know that's a luxury item at the moment, pasta is going out, you're very hard to get your hands on. Um, but I was doing a big Greek spaghetti casserole, so my spaghetti casseroles a large massive baking tray um, and it's just a layer of spaghetti well the spaghetti is covered in uh, butter and garlic basically and you have a layer of spaghetti the layer of sp spaghetti mince um, which is already you know your bolognese which, which you've already cooked up a layer a thin layer of mozzarella cheese another layer of spaghetti and then basically the top of it I put I think it's 500 grams nearly a kilo or a kilo of um, mozzarella on top I bake it and I end up with about 15 meals. Uh, generally they are, I package them up on in Tupperware containers and um, you know freeze so that I've got them for night shift and Nathan has them for work. He, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was saying to her that I was cooking this casserole and then it dawned on me that they were on self um, isolation probably hadn't managed to get to the shops on their way through which is one thing that they you know self-isolation not you're not meant to so they didn't um, so what I did do what you know I packaged when I cooked up dinner I made sure I had three lots for her um, one for her partner one for her daughter and one for herself um, and I said I'd bring it around uh, what I did as well do is on the way there I stopped at the shops and I was able to get some essentials for her um, 
you know, a bit of, like I managed to get bread, milk, some cheese, some ham, butter, uh, bread, um, breakfast cereal for a daughter, you know, the, all the, you know, I just did that just because it was like, well, it's one thing to walk, go around and give her a meal, give them a meal, that's just one night. Um, I didn't know what she had organised for anything else. So I did a shop <clears throat> and I dropped it off for her. Um, you know, basically, I dropped it off on a doorstep, <laughs> rung the doorbell and went to my car. <laughs> um, yeah, she was uh, very surprised. Um, you know, she, she wasn't really aware of how much so self-isolation was. Um, how limiting it is. Um, so I managed to get her through a little bit. Oh, no doubt I will see her when I am back at work and same as when she's back at work. She's due back at work. I think it's the 31st of March. I'm due back at work on the um, 1st of April. <clears throat> so hopefully that's um, helped her out a bit. She did ring me up and thank me. So um, yeah. So you anyway, know, just if you've got the ability to, um, if you could go to the shops and that's the one thing I was able to go to the shops and I went, well, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. So I was able to purchase it anyway because I already had it at home. So I was able to purchase it anyway and be able to drop it off to her because I didn't need it, but they did. Uh, and that's, that's the steps that everyone should be doing. Um, you know, there was no actual so no con no contact with her because you know I just dropped it off at the door. She didn't even know it was happening. So yeah. Um, but what I can say, if you have the ability to help someone out that is you know isolated and you don't have to be, um, you know, try and try and think of the others that have to stay away. Um. For me, <laughs> so I'm on annual leave. Well, actually, no, I'm back on R&R &R now. I had, um, I booked leave. Um, I was supposed to do, I had a range of choices of what I was going to do for the leave. I booked leave with the plan of either one, hopping on a cruise, two, going to Cairns to see my dad, or three, going down to Esperance to see my mum and my stepfather. Um, so that was before all this happened. <laughs> So, you know, stuff happened with the cruise ships. So it's like, oh, well, I won't do the cruise ship. I'll, I'll go across and see my dad. I spoke to Nathan about it, and he was like, you are not getting on a plane. It's like, okay. Well, then I'll go down to West Prince and visit my mum and my stepfather. And he was like, okay, we'll do that. Um, and he said, if I can get the Monday off, <coughs> uh, if I can get the Monday off, We'll go drive down Thursday night um, and come back on Monday. So that way we spend a couple of days in Esperance with my mum, my stepfather, my son and his wife and the little baby bump that she's growing. Um, he came home that night. The, the, he went to work the next day, came home and said, oh, I can't get that leave. Um, so yeah, couldn't go down to Esperance to see my mum, my stepfather. So... Um, it's a hard reality. Um, my mum is over 70, I won't say her age, she's over 70. My step stepfather turns 95 in four days. Uh, the reality is if either of those two get this virus, you know, as we're all aware, you know, it's, I may not see them again, which is a harsh reality of what's going on now. However, I will say that they are in a very small community, um, <coughs> a small town, less than 15,000 population. And t yesterday, they hadn't fully closed off, but um, they haven't fully closed it off, but the, what they can, but regions are going to be um, locked down. 
uh, which means Esperance Region, which is where my mum and my stepfather is, is getting locked down to prevent anything going into those into the smaller communities, so or the smaller towns, those that are away from the metropole area. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully my son and his wife are all doing okay. I haven't rung them for a little while. I don't ring my kids very often. Um, you know, I I raise them with the belief that you know that's their life. I can't. I don't want to interfere in their life. Um, so I ring them every now and then. I ring my son in Esperance every now and then to see how he's going. Um, the biggest thing they know is that I'm, if they need me, I'm there. Um, but I will say her little baby bump is due to arrive in June. So hoping everything goes well with her there. Um, with lockdowns, hopefully the lockdowns will be over by then. Doubt it. Um, so yeah. Um, that's that side of it. So, as I am saying, I'm on a leave at the moment. And I'm... The, 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 so my job is actually classed as one of the essential services. Um, no, I'm not in the in the public sector where I'm looking after people. Train controller. Um, and you get there and you go, how can that be essential? Because what they're wanting in the assigned way of essential services, mining and resources. Um, the mining and resource sector, she- sector is classed as essential uh, because that is a big part of um, keeping the of the economy going. Um, you know, that's yeah. Uh, so I've actually checked up on work. Um, and I've been told that at the moment. We have two areas where we can do um, where we work from. What we have is the city, which is where in a normal day we shift. Normal work is is um, you know day and nights is normally in the city. Uh, and then we have a backup data centre, which is near where I, which is actually only about a ten minute drive from where I live. Um, so what they're doing is to prevent. When we do handovers, we normally have to be, you know, right there on handover. So we can't do the social distancing if we're doing handover in the same building. Uh, so what we are doing is a day shift is in the city, and night shift is uh, out at um, at the data centre, so that we do our handovers on the phone. So we're not. Um, our crew is not mixing with any of the other crews and all of that so uh, they're doing that the best they can Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing in the way of lifts but they are socially isolating the IROC which is integrated remote operations which is where I'm part of um, from the rest of the office uh, so I don't know how they're doing that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they're managing lifts um, because it's probably the space of a lift is probably only suitable for one person uh, with social distancing in place. So it's going to be interesting to see what it's like when I go back to work. Uh, what else have they done for us? Um, public transport. So there is a, a large part of... Um, the employees use public transport to get to work. Now they have turned around and um, so that we don't have to worry about social, uh, this public transport and you know, risking ourselves. Um, we're now, if we park in the city, we're now getting able to get our parking refunded. Um, because that's another preventative me- measure of not being out in the public. So they're doing well for our for what we do. But yeah, our jobs will not stop. Um, which is, yeah, it's a good thing. A very good thing. 
Okay, so craft wise, there's enough of that stuff. I didn't mention it, but you know, I did cover on what it's, how it's affecting me. Um, my partner at this stage, his work is still going, they're just looking at cutting back hours. Um, yeah, we'll just see what happens there. Um, <laughs> don't want to think about that. That's one I don't want to think about. But yeah. Um, yeah, craft wise. What's going on craft wise? Uh, well, with uh, the way the Australian dollar is, um, as much as I want to purchase more diamond paintings, uh, anything over overseas, oh, they're always charging in US, most of the time it's in US dollars. Uh, which, if you see a diamond painting for $30, it's going to cost me over $50 plus an international exchange rate cost. Um, so there's no buying anything from overseas. Um, the place where I can get canvases locally is in a market. And I do believe that those markets will actually get closed. Um, so yeah, I'm actually at the limit of, well, I, no, well, I shouldn't say limit because I've still got diamond paintings. Um, but I'm at the point where I, you know, I can't order any more at this stage. So, I have my blank custom. <laughs> so I might be working on that a bit more. Um, and resin wise, I haven't done much resin work. Now, part of that is um, Sophie and Toffee, uh, the subscription box that I get, because of uh, things going on, the way the world is at the moment, they were unable to their workers run out the workers of what we get the, um, they were unable to you know basically supply so you know my february and march subscription boxes haven't arrived yet been delayed due to the fact that they just can't get the product or the product can't be made uh, so I got notification the other day that both of my boxes have been shipped. So see how that goes. Um, and it is, and I have received notification from Australia Post to say that they have received received it. So I'm expecting that in the next few days. So that'll be another great thing to um, share with you again. <laughs> Uh, it looks, for what I've seen, it looks rather interesting. Um, slightly different, ever so different, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, oops. Is that the little one in there? Yep. Tweezers are hiding in my drawers. Hang on, guys. Uh, uh, concentrating while I get that out. Okay. Where is that? There it is. My dodgy piece of wax. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> mm, so, yeah. So, Sophie and Toffee, those boxes are coming. So, there'll be some resin work coming up very soon. Once that arrives. I have limited amount of resin um, I tried to do the um, my January box which was the vending machines I tried to do them and I filmed part of doing it and then it just failed on me <laughs> uh, I think I put too much too much color in and that's something that I have to learn to be light on I, I get pretty heavy hand with putting the inks into um, my resin and I've got to learn to be a bit lighter because the two part epoxy resin took quite a while to set and then it didn't seem to set properly so 
which means my ratio of pigments or resin was out. And um, yeah, I didn't go any further with that. I recorded it, the, the initial making of it, but I couldn't, I haven't finished it off because I just can't. Um, right, so that's Sophie, oops, Sophie and Toffee. Um, oh. Obviously I've done my last yums box. Um, what else have I got in the way of crafts? Daha. The other couple of crafts that I've got, one is the beaded cross stitch, which I've actually spent some time working on. Um, we had a, oh, you did that at work because we had a cyclone, which meant that there was nothing happening. So uh, instead of just sitting there and just waiting for a radio call, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, I had something to do and keep me awake on night shift. Uh, keep me focused on night shift, I should say. Um, so I've done some beaded cross stitch. I did. I did actually pull out uh, my paint by numbers. Now there was one with it with pink swans. I don't know whether you recall seeing me unbox that one. Uh, but I pulled that one out and started to paint with it, uh, paint it up, and then lo and behold, I got to one tub. A paint that had completely dried up. <laughs> That's like, oh great. And then I tried, you know, I opened up a couple more tubs which had also dried up. So that paint by numbers is uh, by the wayside. <laughs> that one got thrown out. I still have a couple more paint by numbers there to do. So we'll see how they go. Um, they are, I can only do those as a time lapse because. <laughs> They take concentration to get within the lines. Mind, I don't always stick within the lines with the paint by numbers. <clears throat> so, I might be doing a beaded cross stitch um, and a whip and chat while I'm working on the beaded cross stitch. We'll see how that goes. Um, and I finally got myself organized to get um, some glue because one thing, one of the things I've got to get completed is I've got two diamond paintings that I want to turn into decorative cushions. Um, I don't sew. <laughs> so I found a no sew, no sewing way to make a, turn a diamond painting into a cushion. So um, that will be, I'll get to work on that um, and show you how to do that because that's pretty cool. Uh, I've done one, one test run I haven't been able to find that same glue, but um, hopefully this other glue that I've got will do exactly the same thing. Hmm. Um, what other stuff? Uh, what other stuff? Uh, on a, I suppose on a sad note, my video recordings that I do around about four o'clock in the afternoon when you normally hear when you hear boots meowing to be fed. Um, he's no longer with us. So that's a hard one. Um, yeah, we had to take him to the vet. Poor old bugger. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that's very harsh. Um, Bo's missing him. And I will admit that six o'clock comes around, it's like, oh heck, I haven't fed the dog, I haven't had the cat to remind me that I need to feed them. Oh, <laughs> uh, my, you know, it's been, yeah, it's been really weird. Bo has been getting fed, just um, not with, not in the old way that we used to do it. What we used to have to do with Boots and Bo with their dinners was really funny because at about five o'clock I'd give in to Bo Boots' meowing and I'd feed him one sachet of cat food. And so that Bo didn't immediately go around and get into the cat food, um, we get started giving him special dog biscuits that take him a while to, to eat, to distract him. And then about half an hour after that, we then give Boots his second pouch um, 
and then feed both. But we're all out of whack there. Bo's not eating prop, not eating his dinners because it's out of whack. Um, but yeah, so that's a little sad bit of what we've had to do. Um, what's that been? Just under a week. Uh, at least now I can actually talk about it. Um, yeah. So Boots was, I think it worked out, we worked out, he was about 16 years old. Um, yeah, he was getting worse and worse as things, times go by. Um, he was having a few little fits and then, yeah, we took him to the vet and talked with the vet and it was a case of, yeah, um, he's at an age where he's probably better off. Uh, yeah, where he is now. Ooh. Hmm. So that doesn't exactly help my um, my mood lately, but you know, I can just think is is better off. Um, whoop, now I've got tears and I can hardly see the <laughs> hardly see where I need to go. Um, what else is going on? I suppose oh, my youngest son split up from his girlfriend a while ago although they're still sharing the house um, they're just housemates and it seems to be working a lot better uh, uh, there's, there's a big you can we can notice a difference um, he was around here the other day uh, you know he's come in and like he's got very poor very poor sense of smell <laughs> um, which is, comes in very handy at times. It's a pain in the bum other times. Um, his sense of smell is so bad that I had um, years ago a cracked, like I'd, I was frying up eggs, so like, like I've done th three eggs in the pan. All oh, good, the fourth, fourth egg came out and it was black. It was a rotten egg. So basically it's hit the pan and I've got the smell of it and I've, had, I've bolted outside. And Dion's like going, what's wrong? And I said, get rid of that egg. <laughs> he could actually be in the kitchen. He picked the pan up. Uh, he took the pan out the front of the house because I was at the back um, so that it could cool down and uh, go in the bin. Uh, he could not smell the rotten egg. So in, in some ways, you, you get a bit envious of him like that. But yeah, he couldn't smell the rotten egg, which is good. Uh, however, this the other night when he came around, he's dropping something around for Nathan. Nathan, um, and yeah, he he's walked in and gone, oh, that smells good. And like for me to actually have him say something smells good, um, is really good. Yeah, I. And when he says said that, it's like, well, stay for dinner. We've got plenty. Um, it was that. What was it that I cooked? No, it was. It was the spaghetti casserole. Um, so he stayed for that. Uh, I think it was the spaghetti casserole. Mind you, if he couldn't smell it, it'd be really bad because the, the amount of garlic in that, it's, uh, yeah, it's an amazing, amazing smell. Um, if he had have been still been with her, he wouldn't have been able to stay. He'd have to go home and cook dinner. Um, but because he doesn't doesn't have to worry about that anymore, he yeah he came round and he had dinner with us, which is really good. Um. So yeah, uh, and things like that won't happen very much now. He will. He. He has some. Um, Let's just say uh, quite a while ago, well, yeah, a fair while ago, a few years ago, his um, lung collapsed on him. So he had what they call as a spontaneous pneumothorax. Um, 
which means he now has scar tissue on his lungs, uh, which then makes me concerned about him if he gets this stupid coronavirus. Um, yeah. The little things, the little things that you don't think of. Um, you know, here's someone that he, he actually works, he's still got a job, he's still going to work, he's also a uni student. I think they're doing most of their lectures online. Um, we'll see how that goes for how much longer. Um, but yeah, he still goes to work at the, this stage, so he's still exposed to general public. Unlike me, who when I go to work, I'll be cocooned in a very sanitary location and prevented from going anywhere near anyone else. So. Uh, yeah, be an inter interesting thing. Um, Nathan, well, when he comes home, he goes straight and has a shower before he does anything else. Um, yeah. Um, so what else going on? Have you been getting my head in that video or not? I think that's about it um, for Whip and Chat. I'm just wondering whether I should um, have some Australian stories about uh, bush rangers, but not like there's a bush ranger and Meg Kelly, most people have already heard of him. Um, but we do have a couple of different bush rangers. I think we had uh, one actually in WA. So I might see if I can find that story and, and talk, tell you about, about that one. Um, what else can I probably cover? Is there anything, I suppose anything you guys want to um, hear in the way of uh, about Australia, anything different you want to know. Um, yeah, we, we need to find some happy topics to cover nowadays so that, um, yeah, we can chill, drill and chill. <laughs> um, yeah. But I might leave that there just as a short little um, update for how things are going. Um, I so want to organise a custom. I've got, you know, I want to get a custom done, but I just can't, can't validate getting a custom done um, with the cost of it because my custom will, for those who've been watching, will see um, my the camel, my Cairo picture that I want to turn into a custom. So that'll go through Die Moonshot, um, but you know that's obviously not a cheap expense and then you know if if you guys look at it um what it costs you guys and then you just basically that price plus a half is what i'd be paying um so yeah we'll see what happens with the aussie dollar and when that starts rebounding i'll start buying from diamond shop again and overseas um Although I do have, I might be looking at some of the Australian companies to see what they have. The big issue with some of the Australian companies is um, the fact that they have images that are copyright, you know, uh, that breach copyright. Um, and I might find if I go back to Jamit, I can probably get another one of those, um, what's her name? I can't remember her name. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, the lady that did the steampunk, I should be able to get more of those, another one of those, um, without too much issue. Um, they'll get done in, in Aussie dollars as well. But yeah, uh, yet again, waffling on. I've said I'm going and then I continue to waffle on again. So guys, um, I will say, leave me a comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, Go slowly getting there with uh, this one, this little lady. Um, it is gorgeous. Um, but yeah, hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And uh, obviously hit that bell. 
I will say if you're not getting much in the way of notifications, if you actually go to your bell, where your bell is, um, sometimes you'll find that it's not on all, it's just on personalised, even though you don't really personalise it. Um, I found that is the case why I haven't been able to see some people's videos. Um, yeah, you know, so you get a notification to say something's come through, but it's not showing on my subscription. So, um, yeah, just keep an eye on that. Um, and yeah, what can I say? Uh, bye for now.